Hi, my name is Jesse Quack, and I'm the editor of the Crooked series of sci-fi crime anthologies. I'll tell you a little bit more about that after this reading, but right now I want to introduce William Burton McCormick, who's going to be reading from volume two of the series. William is a Shamus, Thriller, Derringer, Silver Falcon, and Claymore Awards finalist, and his Santa Azarina novel, House of Tigers, was an honorable mention for the Black Orchid Novello Award. He's the author of the thrillers A Stranger from the Storm and KGB Banker, and the historical novel of the Baltic's Republic, Lenin's Harem. William has lived in seven countries, including Latvia and Ukraine, which is the setting of the Crimson Vial. All right, go ahead, William. Hi, my name is William Burton McCormick. I'm the author of the story The Crimson Vial in the new Cricket Volume 2 anthology, and I was going to read a little section of it to you today. Uh, this story is a, a little bit of mixture of uh, detective noir with uh, some science fiction. So uh, it, it features the character of Santa Ezarina, my series sleuth. This picture appeared in numerous short stories, as well as the novel KGB Banker. Uh, it's set in Riga, Latvia, and uh, so we will begin. When Santa Ezarina arrived at the building on Gertrudis Ilea, only a short walk from the Beacon offices, she wished she'd ignore J.J. Watkins' instructions to come alone and brought a friend. While clean and well-kept on the exterior, the towering buildings appeared to be nearly abandoned, the windows displaying empty offices devoid of people or furniture. A dreary atmosphere of settled stillness hung over the structure one that she found inexplicably foreboding. At the door, the company placards next to the intercom button were all removed, save for Watkins Pharmaceuticals and Bioengineering USA. She rang the singular office. Immediately, a gravelly American voice answered in English, I'll buzz you in. Top floor, please, Miss Ezarina. The magnetic lock released, and Santa stepped into a circular hall, stretching five stories upward to a vaulted roof, the perimeter of every floor fixed with doors behind railed balconies. A great central staircase connected all points via branching catwalks, like some enormous wide-bowed tree deep inside the Korzuma woods. The floor near the entrance was dusty, apparently long unattended, yet a scent like Oil mixed with chlorine burned Santa's nostrils, made her eyes tear. Urged on by the American voice she heard through the speakerphones at every level, Santa climbed the towering staircase, followed the top floor catwalk to the balcony, and passed through an open doorway into a room of nightmare. On an elevated chair, it resembled to Santa a demented dentist chair, reposed a shriveled old man in white linen shirt and shorts. Behind and on either side of the man, and on his chair, was a great machine of maddening contours, whose silver canisters and pulsating drums sprawled to every corner of the room. Tubing extended from, his room filling, from this room-filling apparatus to penetrate the man at his throat, upper arms, wrist, and snaked underneath the clothing to groin and thighs. As he breathed, and later when he spoke, Liquids flowed into and out of, the, of both machine and man in rhythm with his grasps. The face, pale, ghastly, and aged beyond 70 years, was nevertheless recognizable by, to Santa from the photos she had viewed on the internet of Watkins. And, if her instincts needed more proof of identity in this living scarecrow, a blood-red bow tie hung with perverse humor from a stint where the tubing plunged into his neck. The air was sterile as any hospital, save for the chlorine and oil scents drifting up from the floors below. Welcome, Miss Ezarina. Thank you for agreeing to meet, he said. As his lips moved and the tube liquid flowed in time, the voice itself emanated from speakers in the great machine, so her host spoke in stereo devil's whispers in both Santa's ears. I am J.J. Watkins, Jr., President. Please come into my office. You'll pardon me if I don't rise to greet you. Santa, recovering from her astonishment, began to consider the circumstances. There were no attendants in the room, no physicians, 
nurses, or even security guards, and the chamber was freezer cold. Are we alone in the building, Mr. Watkins? Completely, said the twin speaker voices. I have relocated the business offices to Pyriga near our laboratories and manufacturing plant. My underlings handle all daily business elsewhere. You understand it would harm company morale to see their leader in this state, haunting the old place like some ghoulish creature of Latvian legend. He motioned with a frail hand towards a cushioned stool off to one side. Please take a seat. I prefer to stand. How can I assist you, Mr. Watkins? I need an investigator. Something vital has been stolen from our company, and it must be retrieved. Call the police. This is no matter for the police. And call a police detective. I've hired three since this theft. Two were useless. The third made some headway, then vanished like a phantom at dawn. His tired eyes unfocused momentarily, and the flow of the liquid seemed to slow before rallying. I'm tired of irresponsible private investigators. I need an investigator who gets things done. I need Santa Ezarina. Your success rate must be the highest in Eastern Europe. I'm an investigative journalist, not a detective. I only go where there's a story, and that seems to be right in this room, Mr. Watkins. Oh, there's a story, my girl, but I require confidentiality. We can talk about what the public may know only when the missing items are returned, the thieving party vanquished, and you receive your 250,000 euros. He smiled a feeble smile. Would you like a cigarette? Do people even smoke nowadays? I'm forgetting more and more the social norms in Europe. Can we smoke around your apparatus? Certainly. Nothing is flammable. He pressed a button on his chair. A packet of camel reds dropped from the receptacle to in the side. Santa withdrew the packet, opened it, and lit a cigarette. Watkins breathed in her secondhand smoke with a deep, yearning smile. Tell me what was stolen and by whom, J.J. Dr. Sophia Grinberger, our former director of research in Europe, destroyed all samples of an experimental drug meant to regress malignant cell growth in cancer patients. We were running a first clinical trial, 16 control cases, including placebos, everything normal for a new drug test. Dr. Grin Grinberger, for reasons only she knows, destroyed the vials containing the drug in three of the four transport cases, and with the help of some hacker, erased the formula from Watkins' computers. Company cameras caught her leaving with the fourth carry case. He pressed another button on his chair. The panel slid aside to reveal a monitor in the great machine. On the screen, an image of a bespectacled, bespectacled woman in, the, in a laboratory coat came to life. Carrying what looked like a metallic briefcase in one hand, she crossed a nighttime parking lot to a maroon Mercedes. She placed the carry case in the trunk, got in the car, and drove out, the out of the camera's view. The timestamp at the bottom said October 10th, over a month ago. This was taken by the security campers, cameras at our Pyriga facility. Neither Dr. Grinberger nor the carry case has been seen since. We doubt she's in Latvia. Are you sure the remaining trial drugs are in the case? Why steal it? If it is empty, he shut off the monitor. I imagine one of our competitors got to Dr. Grinberger offered millions, perhaps billions, worth it to her, I guess, to live a haunted life. She's the only one who knew the complete formula. Now it's gone. He leaned forward in the chair, straining the tubing around him, reminded Santa of an insect caught in a spider web. As you may have guessed, without this formula, my own life is numbered in weeks. Her leaving is very much a personal tragedy. I gathered something out of the, those lines, Mr. Watkins pointed to a folder next to the stool. In that envelope is a copy of Grinberga's employment record. We had originals complete with ink signatures, but I gave it to that failure of a detective, Edgar's Blooms. The one who vanished? Yes. Santa retrieved the folder, flipped it open to Dr. Grinberger's file. Clipped to the first page was a photograph of a gray-haired, gray -haired, mildly attractive woman. The form below said she was 62, born in Riga, educated firstly at Riga Technical University, and Moscow State University, and after the West opened at Brown and Harvard. Bright gal. Can I keep this? Watkins nodded perceptibly, the motion dislodging the tie. It fluttered down like a red butterfly into his lap. I'll pay all expenses, Miss Arena, but if you leave the country, let me know. I don't want you vanishing like that freeloader Blums. Santa promised not to vanish. So that's my excerpt from The Crimson Vial in the Crooked Volume 2, 
I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you look forward to uh, reading my story and the other stories in the anthology. And uh, please have a wonderful holiday season. Take care. Hi, and welcome back. I promised I'd tell you a little bit more about Crooked at the end, and here we are. Um, so what is Crooked? It's a series of sci-fi crime anthologies that have been edited by me, and the idea is that it exclusively focuses on including stories that are part of a bigger universe. So this is what kind of what sets Crooked apart. If you came to this anthology because you wanted to read the story from one author whose series you love, hopefully you'll find another author who writes kind of in a similar style or writes you know, maybe something dissimilar, but you know, just something that you're into. You can then go and read that story and be like, oh, I want more of these characters, head to their website and find more of their work. So for example, if you love this reading, check out the show notes below and you'll get a link to the author's website. So this has been an incredibly fun anthology series to work on. Um, please keep an eye out for round three, which will be coming next year sometime. And if you enjoyed this reading, please support the author, go buy their books, head to bit.ly slash crookedv2, and you can find this anthology to find more of the stories. And yeah, I hope you had a really good time and take care out there. Bye.